Hey everybody, it's Brittany at Big Cat Rescue here in Tampa, Florida. And today I would like to give you guys a home tour for two of our youngest residents. That is Flint and Nabisco, two bobcats that live together here. Normally big cats are solitary by nature, but we have found with some of the younger cats that show interest in other of the same species that they um, do fairly well when introduced at a young age. So with that being said, we have Flint and Nabisco who were introduced to each other just a handful of weeks ago. They've been doing really, really well. You can see we actually built this tunnel from one enclosure over to the next. We gave them a shared wall for about a week. They showed a playful interest in one another. So we went ahead and opened that door one day and it's been open ever since. So a lot of people have misconceptions on our enclosures. So I have found the best way to kind of show you the true space is to basically start at one spot and walk myself all the way around so that you can see everything that the cats have. So we're gonna start right here at the beginning. This is a feeding lockout. Either Flint or Nabisco will eat in this every single morning. It depends on which side we separate them. We do separate them for feeding, for enrichment, and for operant conditioning. But you can see it's a box extended off the side of their main enclosure. There's a pile of rocks underneath that water bowl so that every day that we dump that water, it doesn't just create a hole in the ground that holds more water and creates a bug issue. Uh, we do clean their water bowls and their food plates every single day. You'll see there's also a thin layer of chicken wire. That's gonna help keep any of the vultures or larger birds from trying to mess with the cats while they eat. You can see that there's a ceramic tile that covers the water bowl that keeps debris out, um, leaves and different things that might fall in it. That way their water stays fresh all day long. It's lifted and elevated off the ground because wildcats naturally pee in water and youngins like these two like to play in the water. So we want them to have fresh water as long as possible every single day. So that's why we do that. You'll see if you look down the side of the enclosure that the wall of the enclosure is like a bubble system. So the walls are curved. That helps actually strengthen them against wind. You can see that they're four inch by four inch uh, squares. That allows the wind to just whip right through it. A lot more sturdy than having like a solid wall or thinner wire. We try to keep as much natural foliage as we can in the enclosures while still keeping it safe for them and for us. So there are logs and tree stumps they have a nice den there that they can utilize if they so choose. So lots of things they can climb on and scratch on. They are both over in this section right now. So there's this little doorway system here. We can close that door to separate them if need be. There's Nabisco under the platform. Hi, Biscuit. And there's Flint on top of that den. We'll go around the other side and be able to see them both. They have this awesome big tree in their enclosure and you can see along the bottom any of the discoloration. See most of the tree is green, but you see that reddish brown area. That is from them scratching. It's a giant scratching post for them. These enclosures do have a roof on them, so the trees are just growing right out of the top, and then we've patched the wire completely around the top. It's a cute picture of Nabisco. Gotta keep my eye on these two. They are ready to attack. So another view this way. We're gonna come on around. So they have a very large earth den. It's made out of concrete. It's like an underground little burrow for them. Um, they grow tons and tons of ferns on top of it. So a lot of times we have to come in and kind of clear it out and then it grows right back in a couple of months just to keep it at bay. We're always fighting against natural Florida, but we've got to be able to see the cats. So another view back, giant platform for these two. They have a nice big ball there. That center piece of wire, it's a column of wire that is just for the roof structure. 
Here's a very sleepy flint. So they can be on top of this den or in the den. Hi! Where's your buddy? Your buddy's creeping on me right now. I see him. Where's your buddy? You go get him. You boys are so cute. So these two are our youngest residents. Flint was found by hunting dogs and suffered some physical and neurological damage and unfortunately was deemed non-releasable due to medical reasons. Nabisco came to us at six months old after he had been found orphaned after a wildfire out west. So because they were so young, we thought we would see if they wanted a buddy. A young age, they would have had siblings to play with. So, and we'll be monitoring them as they get older. If they decide they don't want to share space, that's always something that we'll keep in mind. But so far, so good. They really love playing. So let's keep walking. We're gonna go around the backside of this den. You'll see they have another raised water bowl right here. Another view of their den and, or I'm sorry, their platform, and they can get all the way on the top of that if they feel so inclined. They also really love laying under it, nice and cool and shady. Of course, it's a cloudy day anyway, but in Florida, always seek shade. <laughs> so as we come around this side, this is a safety entrance. That bag that's hanging on the side is actually a fly trap. So we change those out frequently in the summertime when we have a lot of rain. It just keeps any kind of flies from bothering our cats. So their safety entrance allows us to go in. We can shift them out of whatever section that we don't want them in. So if we need to get into this side, we would shift them over here and vice versa. And then once they're where we want them to be, we go in through the first set of uh, wire, close it behind us, and then we can go into the second gate. So another view, you can see the front of that tree stump den. So this was their buddy hallway for a while. Now it just is open and it leads them over to this second section over here. Another huge concrete den. This is Flint's favorite den. He's always on top of it. Um, actually, this is a good feature to show you. So we also have thin chicken wire because this is a bit of a narrow space here. And with bobcats on either side of you, you don't want their little paws and claws coming out. So you'll see that there's another layer of mesh to allow our keepers to safely cross through here. Some more natural trees. That den has another opening on this side so we can see all the way through it. There's another guillotine door that allows them to go into that front section over there. This is the other feeding lockout. So again, either Flint or Nabisco, whoever shifts to whichever side and we close the door, that's where they have breakfast that morning. So you've got the guillotine door again. There's chicken wire around it. There's this pole that holds the door wire and clip. Another water bowl, another hose. And a view back this way. I'm a little surprised I haven't been surprise attacked yet. So we try to leave as much of a natural landscape as we can, as long as it's safe for the cats. You'll see these white PVC tubes with the valves on it. That is a sprinkler system in case we would ever need it. Different times of the year are dry season. Florida is also prone to fires. So we've got that in place. You can again see how the curve of the walls, that's what makes it so deceiving. People get a look at one of our photos or one camera angle and they think that's all the space the cat has, but in reality, they've got all this. So they have one low platform here, and then they have a different shaped concrete den there. Another tree, some more ferns, and then they have yet another water bowl.
and the reason that they're off the side of the cage is for the safety of the keepers. Um, you do have to put your hand in to flip it, so rather than having to put your arm in the entire enclosure, it's just a quick flip of the hand, and then you can close that guillotine door to the whole section and make sure that the cat's not in there when you do that. So our cleaners come around after breakfast and they clean all of those. Here's another safety entrance and another fly trap. And then we are back to where we started, the original lockout. And you'll see Flint got all the way on top of that platform. If you do have any questions at all about any of our enclosures, please check out bigcatrescue.org slash cages. We really appreciate your understanding and support.